Welcome, everybody, to the start of a run of Arcanium. My name is Gracian. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Welcome to my channel. I have a lot of playlists of different strategy games. I play a lot of Planetfall and a lot of other sort of indie games and strategy games and that kind of thing. For my channel update video that I put out pretty pretty recently, at least as of the recording of this video, I showed off six different sort of roguelite uh, games that I was thinking about playing next, and I had people vote, and I got a pretty even split of votes, so I ended up just sort of rolling and, and getting a random one. So it ended up being Arcanium. From, from the list of ones that people voted to see, uh, Arcanium is going to be the choice. Now, Arcanium is a deck building roguelite game so a roguelike game is a game that resembles the old ascii game rogue which i have played and is pretty interesting and that's a truly independent like run system so every time you play that game you're starting from scratch running through some randomly generated stuff trying to get as far as you can before you fail and start over roguelite games which is what this is and has become very popular lately say with things like slay the spire and Monster Train and Legend of Keepers, and there's just a whole bunch of them. Rogue Light games have a system of progression. So you play through, and then after you you lose, typically, you get experience or you get some kind of currency, and then you can use those things to unlock additional features and he have either more options or better options for the future. So a lot of these games have a story or a final boss or something like that that you can't get to for a, for a while until you've played quite a bit and kind of found the characters or the play style you like and unlock some of the features. As you can see, there is a, a, like a mastery level in this game. So this represents all of the um, level total of all the characters I've played. So this does... This doesn't actually give me anything quite yet because this game still is in early access and sort of relatively early development. But um, you can see that this is basically how much I've played as I played enough to get basically 52 levels worth of all the different characters. Speaking of which, this game Arcanium, it's developed by Super Combo and published by Rogue Games. And I have to say that the developers are doing something that I really, really like. A lot of early access games come out... I think a little bit maybe too early. Uh, they're not quite as polished. This game, to be honest, is very polished for what's in it so far. There's not a whole lot of content, but as you'll see as we go through, there's a fair amount of content in this game already, and it's very polished. I haven't encountered, I don't think I've encountered any bugs, no crashes, and that's just me, of course, but I, I haven't seen anything other than wanting more content. I, I don't really have any gripes with this game. Um, and they also have done something that a lot of developers have been a little bit quiet about recently, and it's a little frustrating, is they have a, a very in-depth roadmap that is updated constantly. And if you go to the Steam page, this image is actually in the description, and then every time something else comes out, they actually update that as well, so you can see how far along they are. When I first got this game, it was up in, I think, in the middle of Q1, possibly, because I believe Ragnarok and Tara were both out, the new heroes. And then I think Shinzo came out a little bit after, so I think I was right in there when it came out. And the uh, thankfully, I started playing uh, after the save feature was implemented, which <laughs> doesn't sound very fun to not be able to save. But yeah, so we're all the way down here to, uh, we've had side quests added to the map, and now we're down in quarter two, we have the second province come out, and I'll show you that in the map, and a new hero, Misty. So this game, as you can see, there's Mozebus, Celeste, Maverick, Carrion, Drakaw, Wolfgang, Juju, there's a whole bunch of characters planned on being released, and um, that's gonna, it's gonna more than double the amount there in the game. I think there are eight unlocked characters right now that are available to play. And they're very fun and they have different ways you can build them. And mixing and matching them makes for a really great experience. I love games where you have a variety of heroes or characters to choose from so that there's a lot of replayability. Um, you know, that was one of my favorite things about Slay the Spire, which I think was a lot of people's first roguelite game, uh, at least modern roguelite game, was that, you know, there were the three, now four, maybe five different play styles because of the different characters there are. And that's just a really, really fun way to do roguelites. So Arcanium is, it's called Arcanium Rise of Akan because Akan is like the big bad guy. Um, so this character isn't implemented in the game yet, as far as I know. 
There's only a couple of provinces that have been implemented so far. As you can see on the roadmap, Province Uzir, that's the second province. And then you can see there's a Scorched Lands coming out down here in quarter three. So right now there's basically like a kind of a almost spooky forest with like a lot of spiders in it. And then there's sort of a desert that's Uzir that's sort of... Um, got like mummies and uh, hyena type characters and that kind of stuff um, all the characters are like anthropomorphic animals um, and they all sort of fit those sort of roles like there's like a lion paladin tank character and and like a, a fox that does like fire damage and by the way this will just be an episode zero where I'll sort of talk about the game and how to play it how to choose your characters and how everything works so we'll probably do maybe one battle like kind of slowly to show what's going on um so if you want to skip to like me just sort of playing with a little bit less narration uh, feel free to go to episode one which will come out shortly after this one so if we go on into the bestiary we can get a feel for some of the monsters that you fight in this game so for instance here's a pretty standard one this forest crawler this character this monster will be found in the the primary zone of the two the first one so you can see the enemies follow a similar pattern that you do. You have, you know, cards that they have in their hand and they cost different action points. You can see this is one, 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 and three action points for these different costs. And these symbols also mean something, but we'll get into that in a second. So you can see this forest crawler puts some poison on a character, can deal some direct damage, can summon a hatchling that has five attack and five health, and can apply poison in a splash as sort of a bigger more powerful attack has just 25 health and this character reduces nature damage taken by 50 percent and this will be important because all of the characters you can choose in the game have two elemental affinities is at least so far that they can choose from while they're building their decks everyone has a starting deck but you'll get a lot of different cards as options as you play so this is a character that you don't want to be hitting with nature damage because it's kind of a waste and then you can see down, like here's a tomb crawler. This is a character from Uzir. So this character has a little bit more health. This character reduces void damage. They can do things like reduces damage taken by a little bit for a, for a while, um, deal a lot of damage and apply slow. This is like a super move. Here's just a multi strike two, which means they just hit five damage twice on one target. And uh, they can apply weak, they can apply hex. So these characters have a lot of debuffs. So you can see here that in the bestiary, I have quite a few, there's quite a few monsters in the game already. And some of these are like bosses. So here's actually a mini boss. Just fight this, fought this character the other day, 240 health. You don't want to try to fight the mini boss right away. The funny thing is you can just move right over to the mini boss on the map and just try to fight them or the boss. You just, you won't succeed because you'll have uh, ungeared characters with basic decks. Um, but you can see this character is much more dangerous, deals 24 damage in a line, uh, 24 splash damage and applies weak. So this character is very dangerous, uh, but I won't show off which ones are the bosses so that it's a little bit more interesting when we get to them. In the collection, we can see that there are artifacts. So there are different sorts of items that you can find that you can equip to your characters as you play. And these can be very, very powerful. So you can see here, uh, Anador is the forest and Uzir is the desert province. So you can see, you'll find this blade of justice. Typically, if you're in the Uzir region, you'll find this kind of beast slayers trophy in the forest. If you're there, these neutral ones you can find in, in many places. This is a, a pretty good one. I find a lot um, that you put on your tank to make them take less damage since tanks often spend time redirecting damage to themselves. Um, there's all sorts of good ones. Here's a carved wood pipe different swords and armors, trinkets, bags. This is a, a animal brass knuckles. <laughs> it's got like little, like a little cat paw. <laughs> uh, lances and armor, all sorts of good stuff. Here's a grenade launcher. I don't know, I don't know why there's a grenade launcher, but I mean, there's just pay heaps and heaps of these artifacts. I mean, a lot of these aren't unlocked yet, uh, but that's another system that's in the game and I'll show you that. And you can see these are all the ones that are just in the game now. These are all neutral, Anador and Uzir. As more regions come out, I'm sure they're gonna add even more. I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous how much stuff is in here. And then for abilities, you know, same thing. There's 27 pages. They're categorized by the character. So here's Angorn. He's got all these different level one cards that he'll start in his deck. And then as you level characters, you unlock additional cards that you can then find through your playthrough. So you won't start with a better deck, but you will have access to better cards as you play, which is a pretty typical roguelite thing. 
You can also take a look at your run history. So you can see, um, this one says it's in progress, but it's, it's actually not. I don't know why that won't go away. But you can see the different games that I've played. And let me just show off the options real quick. It's pretty bare bones. Uh, you've got quality, but it's all lumped into there. So you really can't change a whole lot about it. Uh, fortunately, they have separated out ambience from effects, which is I do like when games do that. And, and I would recommend after your first game, turn the tips off because the tips will not stop appearing in the bottom, even if you've seen them a hundred times. It's very strange. So if we go into play, we have a couple different difficulties. Now we haven't unlocked Apex difficulty yet, the Apex custom, um, but Apex is like a very difficult version of this. I'll probably just do my first game on normal. So you can see here are the eight characters that are currently in the game. And then here are all those characters I mentioned from the roadmap that are planned to come out in the next I don't know how long from now, uh, which is pretty exciting because there are eight unlocked now and there are nine more coming with a total of 17 characters is pretty good for content, I gotta say. This is the level of my characters. I haven't played Misty, she came out very recently, uh, but as you can see, I've played a couple of these characters more than others, but I've tried everybody out as you can see because they're all about the same level. So in this game, you will make a team of three and you will go ahead and drag the heroes over here to get the ones that you want. And they have these little symbols here, which is nice. It'd be nice if you could see them on here, but you do have to pull them over to see what they do. So, so as you can see, Angorn is a healer. If we go ahead and right click on him, we can actually get a little bit more of a, of a, of a look at what he is able to do. Now, Angorn here has been affectionately referred to as Daddy Dearest by the community. I'll go ahead and slap an image up there of him. Angorn is our druid, the chosen druid. You can see he's support. He is from Anador, the forest province, and he has nature and light as his two elements. So these do different things. So for instance, nature uh, is governed by Sansia, the spirit of fortitude and growth. It's a passive aggressive color that relies on keeping your team healthy while dishing out ramping up damage. Effectively, that means poison. You'll do a, a, a bit of poison. This Angorn himself doesn't do a ton of that. He's really more of a support character, but other characters with nature are gonna do like poison damage. Um, so, but what the big thing he does is he gives out regeneration to his allies. He doesn't do very much basic healing, but he does give a lot of regeneration. He can cleanse things off of people uh, and he can apply a little bit of shielding. He also has light, which is governed by Eluna, the spirit of life and power. It's a balanced color that relies on supporting and buffing allies in order to crush the enemy, which is very much the case when we get to the, the lion character, you'll see uh, how powerful some of these are for uh, keeping your allies alive. The cleansing touch here is a good example. The cleanse is a very useful thing. Here's a dispel for the enemy. Here's having another target draw two cards. So you can see here, it also sort of gives an idea of how difficult they are to use. So this character, according to to the developers, is fairly difficult to use. Starts with 58 health, and he's got medium to low attack, very high utility, medium to low endurance. And then here are all the cards that he has. Now, some of these I haven't unlocked. You can see once I get him to level 12, I'll unlock this, or I can spend these like stones on it. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, I'll get everything eventually. These stones, by the way, you get after you complete runs. They're gonna be used to purchase hero abilities like this or cosmetics, but that is not currently in the game. We have Aurora. Uh, this is our mage character. She's like, she uses elemental, but um, it tends to just be fire in particular. There are other elemental type powers, but um, you can see all of hers are very, very explosive looking. So she has light, but she also has elemental, which is Zakar, the spirit of wrath and destruction. Powerful color and the most aggressive of all. It relies on destroying your opponents before they get a chance to retaliate. So she's, she's pretty sassy, to be honest, when you're in game with her. She gets pretty excited about blowing things up. Um, she is from Uzir, the, the desert. She is a mage. She has 55 health, so I think that's a, I think that was lower than Angorn, right? Yeah, he had 58. She has very high attack, some utility, and low endurance, even though her uh, health isn't too much lower. Her endurance, she just doesn't have any, like, she's not going to be shielding or healing or anything like that. She relies on others to do that for her. 
And so she has some pretty pretty standard things that you would expect from a fire mage. She can apply burn, which is a, a dot that you put on somebody that does some fire damage over time. She can just deal a bunch of damage to something. Uh, she can do burning in a splash and give them burn. So she's she's pretty straightforward and she's super fun to play. You just stack up burning and just explode everything. We have Leon, the <laughs> creatively named lion character, the ardent paladin. He is a tank. He is from the province of Avaria, which is not out yet. He has medium attack, high utility, high endurance, and medium-ish uh, difficulty. He's got 67 health. He has light, but he also has arcane. Argos, the spirit of knowledge and mastery, a defensive color that relies on controlling and outplaying the enemy in order to turn the tide of battle. So you can see here like taunting as part of arcane, absorbing debuffs in a splash, gaining immune. And immunity is actually how this character tends to tank. Rather than putting shield points on that act as a, a extra bar of health for damage for a while, this character just straight up blocks the entirety of an attack. So you can see he's got a lot of abilities that are just like apply immune, apply immune, gain immune. So this character is very good at tanking by just completely negating damage. His weakness is going to be enemies that do multi-attack. So if an enemy has a multi-attack of say three hits for three damage each, his immunity will only block the first three damage and then the second two go through. So, so he's really good at blocking big hits, but he's not so good at blocking lots of smaller hits. For that, you're gonna want somebody like Angorn who can put up shields and that's just a, like extra health. So they can work pretty well in tandem. Uh, Milady, I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Milady sounds bad, but that's what, that's what I think it is. She's the master duelist. She is an assassin. She's from Avaria as well, from Le like Leon is. She has arcane and elemental. She has medium attack, medium high utility, low endurance, and she's very easy to play. Um, she has 61 health. Milady is very fun because she tends to hit a lot of times and she has these stances she can do where she gets into an offensive stance to do extra damage or a defensive stance um, to do, get some shield when she hits people. So she, she relies on lots of smaller hits like death by a thousand cuts rather than big blasts like um, Aurora does. Misty is the new character. Now, I've not even looked at her abilities yet. Now, she is light and nature, so that's pretty interesting. She is a, some sort of tiger monk. She's an assassin from Uzir. She's got medium attack and utility, low endurance, 61 health, very easy to play. That's a little surprising. Okay, so she does... What's shock do? I haven't actually seen this. Does light damage to adjacent targets whenever the target is hit. So she might be a good character to have in the middle. Um, punching the one in the middle and it's spreading out to their allies, which will hurt quite a bit. There's always going to be three enemies and three heroes, basically. So that's pretty useful to have that sort of splash. She also is able to gain this uh, chi, so it's used for different effects. Um, she can have a max of five of that. She's got multi-strike. Piercing damage will go through shields. Let's see. Uh, ignoring all resistances and shields, but it is blocked by immune. So Misty is the newest character and I have not played her. I don't know that I'll play her on this particular run since I don't know how well she meshes with other characters, but I will probably play her in the future. Ragnarok, I've played him quite a bit. He's a crocodile general. Uh, he is a mercenary. So what he does is he actually has Void in nature. So Void is Umbra, the spirit of decay and deception. This is a reckless color that relies on absorbing the energy of the living while unleashing the power of death. So this character has things like this five damage cleave that's shield steel so if the enemy has shields he will absorb them which is very helpful because not only do you remove their shields so that your other characters can actually hit them but he gets those shields she's got a little bit of endurance from that low utility good attack you know pretty reasonable difficulty 64 health is pretty good He's also, like it says here as a general, he actually summons minions. He's one of the only characters, it might only be the only character so far. I think he's the only character that has minions in his um, in his starting deck. Um, so this, this actually slaps this Reptarian spawn onto the battlefield, so it's a little 4-4 guy, and they will just help him deal damage, and then he can kind of like move to other lanes and keep spawning more units. Um, and then he can do things like force his 
his minions to attack. So he'll deal, deal three damage, force the minion in your lane to attack once. So this is really seven damage, but it can get a lot better from there. He also has a little bit of multi-strike, a little bit of life steal, and he does have some uh, attacks that will attack in a line so he can kind of cut through. If the enemies have minions, he cuts through those to get to the actual enemy unit itself. We have Shinzo. Shinzo is an alternate tank character from Anador. He's the Ox Templar. He has very low attack. He is nature and light, good utility, very high endurance, and that's definitely the case. And he's got a lowish difficulty. He uses this thing called Bolster, which is quite interesting. Bolster, whenever this unit, this hero takes a hit, reduce the cost of this card by one AP until played. So he might have a hand of, of cards that have Bolster you cover him in shields or something like that so he gets hit, but he doesn't necessarily take much damage and then his cards get cheaper in his hand, which are very cool. And he can get some very expensive bolster cards, like here's uh, <laughs> Ram, it costs eight, which you'll never have enough action points to play as you must get, get it reduced in cost with the bolster effect, but 40 piercing damage in a line is insane. As you've been seeing, we've been looking at numbers like, high numbers are like 12, right? This is a 40, but it's it costs quite a bit. You gotta really, uh, you have to plan on using this card. And last but not least is Tara. This is our Warden Ranger. She is a Marksman. She is Nature and Elemental. She has good attack, very good attack, pretty good utility, medium endurance, low difficulty, only 52 health is pretty low. And she's pretty easy to play. She's going to just basically just shoot people with arrows like this one here. Um, and no range limit. I'll talk about that when we get into the game. The, uh, the, the layout of the, the creatures does matter for uh, how what kind of effects you can use. So we'll, we'll show that when we get in there. Um, she has a lot of poison with this, which is really fun to stack up poison on enemies. She can put down a couple of traps, like there's an explosive trap and there's a poison trap I just used in my last one. Yeah, nauseous trap. Um, so you lob this onto an enemy and then hit them with some nature card and it gives them eight poison, which is pretty good. So she is pretty fun to play, pretty easy to play as well. As you can see, we only have one Void Hero, and they definitely have a lot of them planned. Like, a lot of them planned, actually. Maybe too many, but I think we got a lot of these Nature and Light ones have already come out. So I think it might be because of the regions they're from. The regions have different themes. So when you start a run, you will have a seed up here. There's It was randomly generated. I just went ahead and put all twos in here just to see what happens. And then if anybody else wants to try it out, just try out all twos and see if you can do better than I did. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag three different heroes in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to take Aurora. She's really fun to use. She does a lot of damage. So what you need with her is some kind of... Uh, definitely need somebody to tank for her. Leon is an excellent tank, but Shinzo is also very good. He's just, I think he's a little harder to play than Leon, even though it says he's harder. I didn't find that to be the case personally. And then who should we? Who else should we should we take with us here? Um, I think we'll go ahead and take Angorn as our third, even though we've got kind of a lot of healing and and buffing here. But she can do a lot of damage, so she might be okay on her own to do damage. So now over here, you can see heirloom. Now, what does this mean? So heirlooms are artifacts that you're gonna start the game with on your characters. So as you can see, the training armor gives them plus eight maximum health. It's a very helpful thing to take at the beginning of the game when you're using all your new characters, and it's the only one they're gonna have available. This will permanently use up one of their slots, but as far as I can tell, you can't actually get rid of it. Um, so I, I don't know what's going on with that. You can't actually unequip it, unfortunately. but. As you can see, these characters actually get special ones that unlock at further levels. I don't have those unlocked yet, unfortunately, because all three of the characters I'm taking are only level six, but my level 10 characters have them. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how all of my characters ended up so close to leveling up at the same time, but it is what it is. So they're all gonna be taking these heirlooms to begin with, but uh, these other ones are very exciting. For instance, uh, Ragnarok's here. I was just looking at this. He's got this, instead of getting the plus eight max health, he can have this crescent blade. Your minions gain plus one, plus one, which sounds really cool since he summons tons and tons of those little Reptarian spawn guys. Um, so that'd be really cool to have them be five fives instead of four fours. And there are actually other creatures in the game you can buy to add to anyone's deck, which is a really cool feature. So he can actually get other creatures. And sometimes I do give him, um, 
like I had this really powerful dragon creature in my last game and I had a guy that heals you when you play him. They're very, very useful. So now that we have our party selected and our heirloom selected, which of course we didn't have a choice for these ones, we can go ahead and get started. So a quick guide, main objective, beat the boss to win the run. Boss battles are extremely challenging and will automatically trigger upon reaching 90 threat. Threat is kind of like time and I'll show you how that works. You explore around the hexes um, by clicking and you accumulate threat. I'll show you how that works. And then there are side quests and shard battles and other things like that um, that you can get really good loot from. So let's take a look at that now. The next thing we have to do is choose a final boss and a starting province. So as, as I mentioned, we have two provinces in the game right now. Anador, which has this adorable little owl. And we also have Uzir, who has, I think this is like one of those long-eared dogs here. And there's like scarab wings and it looks like eyes. This is, I don't know what this is, but it's a really cool symbol, I have to say. So do we want to do Iron Axe in Anador in the forest and fight like spiders and poison creatures? Uh, or do we want to fight like mummies? Hmm... Let's show off the newest province. We can actually try, look how swole this guy is. Oh my God, he's huge. Okay, wait a second. Oh yeah, and she's got all the eggs. She's horrible. So actually, let me show these characters off really quickly. So Aranax and her forces have swarmed the land, spewing webs of corruption under Akan's direction. That's the big baddie. She will come find you when the threat reaches 90, unless you find her first. So as I mentioned, you can actually seek out the final boss and fight them early. It's just... It might be better off building up for quite a while. Bosses change passives at the start of each round are immune to crowd control, so you can't stun them. But they will have minions you can stun. They have a, She has a silk cocoon. She gains stasis upon taking 20 or more damage in a single hit. So if you try to nuke her down with a big hit, she's going to go invulnerable, which is really frustrating. So you have to be careful about how you damage her. She won't always have this silk cocoon up. But it, it does play a, a big role, especially if you have a character like Aurora that I have uh, that does big damage. She apply, She also has a, another stance where she applies poison when you hit her. I killed one of my characters beating her the last time I played her, but I did win. Um, she also has a stance where she returns damage that she takes. And she summons these clutches that she'll then, these hatching nests that she'll then actually absorb health from. Um, and then these also respawn. So, and then these clutches will also <laughs> attack you so they can apply poison, deal a lot of damage, make these broodlings that have a ton of damage and a little bit of health. Like th she's hard and these, they have a hundred health. Um, she has like 200, 300 health or something. These bosses are hard. Uh, Rexar here summons his forces in the heat of fury to decimate the land. He will come find you when you reach turn 90 threat, unless you find him first, uh, reach 90 threat. Uh, he has a golden skin, gain immune upon getting hit. Petrification gains stasis after receiving four hits on a turn. Cleanses all debuffs, gains 40 shield. And give Raxar 25% damage reduction on destroy, apply five vulnerable to Raxar. So those are the um, sun discs that he has. So he'll summon these next to him that give him damage reduction. And then when you destroy them, it harms him. But they, they do a fair amount of damage actually. Yeah, both of these bosses are hard, and I can't wait to see what they come up with for the new regions. So I think uh, we'll go ahead and do probably do Rexar. Uh, I've done him the I've only done him like once or twice. So let's go ahead and begin. So here's uh, here's Daddy Dearest Angorn. Nature forces are in danger. These cursed shards of Umbra will all be destroyed. Let's see how we can restore the balance. Let's take a look at the UI really quickly. I know there's kind of a lot going on. First off, let me show you the, the province detail. So here's Uzir. Uzir is the home of elemental and light villains. So they're going to find a lot of elemental, light, and a little bit of void. The enemies here have a lot of offense, low defense, and some control. You can also read a little bit of lore about the region here. It's a vast desert of undulating sand dunes and the occasional oasis. Sparse vegetation would make a foolhardy place to live, etc., etc. Um, here are the artifacts that are available to find in Uzir. You can see there are 13 pages of these artifacts. That's ridiculous. Uh, here is the bestiary of enemies that we will encounter in Uzir. Don't want to give too much of a spoiler for that. Here is the boss. We don't have any lore on him, but I mean, obviously he hits the gym, so I don't know what else you need. And then here are the heroes that are from this region. Doesn't super matter. It's just kind of cool that they thought of 
they kind of thought up like where the characters that you have access to, like where did they come from in the world? I, I do like that they did that. Well, this character looks cool. I wonder if she's going to be another he healer uh, with light and arcane. That seems like uh, buffing and, and controlling maybe. So maybe she's a support. And this like dingo fox type character here. So over here we have our active quest, which is shard boss battle. So the shard boss battle is right here. You can tell because it's the big glowy scary looking one. So if we go over here, we can actually just fight him right away. We would have to move along the map to get to him, but we could just fight him right away. We would just definitely lose. So that's our only quest right now, but we can pick up many uh, side quests. You can see them here. There's a quest start, a quest start, quest start here. Uh, up along here, we have our different characters. We can see their health and their redraw number. That's each turn how many cards they will draw to add to their hand unless they hit maximum. You can also click on these heroes to get to look at their decks and all that other stuff, but we'll look at that in a second. So we're in this province. Each of the seven provinces contain unique cards, enemies, and challenges. We are on difficulty normal. This is our gold. You'll use this to purchase a lot of stuff. You can buy cards. You can buy... Uh, equipment and items you can buy consumables you can buy a lot of cool stuff with this actually you can pay to rest your heroes at the inn if you need a camp and you've used up all the camping supplies you have here's where we are in the day so there is a day counter there are six steps in each day in the daytime so morning afternoon and sunset we can see further away so you can see we're right here we can see what these nodes are but we can also see what these nodes are. And at night, we won't be able to see these two nodes away from us. We'll have to get closer to plan out where we want to go. At night, we only have one node visibility. There are other bonuses to playing in the daytime versus the nighttime, but we'll I'll talk about those when we encounter them. For instance, you can encounter like sneaky, elusive enemies at nighttime that if you can beat them, you can get like extra treasure, basically. Here is our threat meter. This is probably the most important thing to pay attention to that's going on. So we currently have easy difficulty enemies because we're at the beginning of the game. So you can see we have zero of 90 threat. Every time we activate a node, we add various amounts of threat. It's, it's always gonna be one, but it might be more like three or four. And then at, when it gets full, you automatically fight the boss after you finish whatever node it was that got you to full. So what'll happen is, is once we get to say here, um, shards will start falling and they'll be, they'll look similar to this. And they're basically like mini bosses. Like here's one, uh, this is a shard battle. Defeat a super elite villain. You'll get an artifact, two abilities from this. It looks like they're upgrade abilities too, but this person is going to be extremely powerful. This is some sort of like armored, molten armored scorpion here. So we want to avoid that for right now. This is our essence. Defeating battles rewards essence at five essences. You can upgrade a hero for the rest of the run. You get one essence from normal battles, two essences from elite battles, and three essence from shard battles. So this is not something you really have to pay attention to. It'll just sort of happen as you go. Here's a reminder of what the boss is going to be doing, if you need to see that. Here's your timer of how long your run is. And then we have like our battle log, our backpack, our province details, our settings, and then quitting. And the game saves automatically. You can see, uh, yeah, so it'll save automatically. So let's take a quick look at the map. So here's where we start. This is Uzir here. You can see anytime we hover over a node, it says Uzir on the left. If we scroll up to here, this is actually Anador up here. You can see right here is where it split. So I can actually run up to Anador if I want. There's not a lot of reason to run around up in this zone unless you wanted to do like the side quest or something. But at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter that much. Um, if your team is built in a certain way, like maybe you're gonna be good against the enemies that are in this zone. So you probably don't, maybe you don't wanna run up here and try to fight anything up here. There was like a world map that I had found at one point and I cannot for the life of me remember where I found that. So if I can find it, I will let you know. So let's take a look at some of the nodes that we have available to us. So we start here. Any step we take is going to add, you can see it says defense elite battle. And then right underneath it, it says plus three. That's the, th that's the threat. So this node going here would give us plus three threat towards finishing, like having to go and fight the boss and finishing the run. Going here is plus two. Going here is plus three. 
And then moving along, clear nodes will still be one. So you have to be careful how much sort of backtracking you do because you're going to waste a lot of your threat time. It doesn't feel too bad when you're playing. You don't feel like you have to like min-max your movement around the board or anything like that. But it is something you got to pay attention to. Don't, don't just like run around willy-nilly and waste all of your threat. So as I mentioned in my channel update video, in this game there are actually several types of fights, which is a really cool mechanic. There are regular fights, so here's an assault. Now this is an elite, so it's sort of a bad example, but it just says defeat any three villains. So this is where you just go in and you just have to beat up the three enemies. There are also breach battles, so anytime you defeat an enemy, uh, it shows like this crystal spawns temporarily, and the goal is to defeat that crystal. Um, not the enemies themselves and the enemies will keep respawning and they actually do that in all the fights and I'll show you how that works The defense elite battle is just surviving for four rounds So this is doesn't matter how many enemies you kill you just need to survive for four rounds So those are the basic three types of battles you'll have then there's also of course the shard battles that'll have even more Interesting weird things going on and then there's gonna be like mini bosses um, That will like these shards that are gonna fall from the sky are gonna have like more and more powerful enemies and then here is the final boss battle, of course, which has a, a lot of unique mechanics in it, as we saw when I talked about Raxar here, the swole, the swole god of the desert. There are lots of other things in the game, like campsites to re repair, uh, restore your party's health or upgrade your cards. There's some loot here, that, but it gives you a lot of threat because you're spending time like looting instead of defeating minions. There are quests to do. Uh, there's a breach battle over here. We have an elemental shrine. Pray to the spirits and gain permanent upgrades to your heroes. There is portals, so you can spend gold to charge the teleport scroll or fast travel to another portal or capital. There's a portal over here. So you have this teleport scroll. Ours is not charged right now, but you can charge that up so you can teleport to help you avoid some backtracking. Or you can use this to teleport to the capital which is, I don't think we've found it yet. There's a capital city somewhere that we can return to. Or we can teleport to like, here's a portal. There's a portal over here, there's a portal over here. One over here by the boss, that's good. One down here, that's a weird spot. Um, so those are kind of randomly assigned. Some of these events and quests will have characters in them that you can sort of recruit for the town, for the capital city. So once we find the capital city, they will have services there like an inn and a smithy and a trainer and that kind of stuff. But those characters won't all be there until we find them in the world and recruit them, either recruit them or have to, you may have to do like a quest or something to get them. I'm not 100% sure. I think you just have to find them and then you can kind of send them back to the capital city. And then when you go there, either with your portal or by walking back over it, you have access to a lot of things all at once. Say, you know, you can upgrade your cards, buy new cards, buy new equipment, rest. You can do all that stuff in one spot, which is very helpful. And then the last thing I'll show off before we call this episode to an end here is if you click on your characters up here or you can do that over here in your backpack, you can see the decks that you start with. So Angorn here starts with this Vine Lash, deals, deals a little bit of damage. He's got this Thorny Shield, apply 10 Shield and one Backlash. So you can give somebody a bunch of Shield um, to protect them uh, or apply a couple regeneration points to somebody. You can see we can take cards out, um, but you have to have nine cards at least in your deck. So you can have a, th you can have a thinner nine card deck or you can go up to 12. Uh, once we unlock some more cards during this playthrough and what that does is you get plus one redraw so as long as we keep a thin deck of nine cards we will we're more likely to draw the exact cards we want every turn but we also only draw three if we go up to 12 we'll have four cards we draw a turn so if you want more choices more combos you want a big deck if you want a very specific combination of cards all the time then you want a thinner deck but that's as far as it goes you can't make it any smaller than this unfortunately and the only slot bonus is at 12 so really you're only doing 9 or 12 cards this is something that's not really my favorite part about the game um, I wish you could just I wish they would expand the bonuses for different slots or something like that I'm not sure what they would do but this is just not super interesting unfortunately for me so we also have uh, Leon here has Pummel, deals a little bit of damage and taunts so you can redirect an enemy's attack towards himself so he can block it or somebody who's got a shield or more health or something. He's got a little bit of damage and restoring health and then he's got deal damage in a cleave so he can hit multiple enemies. 
And then we have Aurora, who's got our basic fireball. She has a Scorch to apply some burn, and she has some Ignite that deals damage and doubles if they're uh, burning from one of her other abilities. We also have our artifacts here. We can see she's got this training armor. Now, this is locked. We can never remove this, but she does have three other artifact slots, and in fact, everybody does. So we'll be able to give them items throughout the course of the run, and we'll be able to actually mix and match those. So if we get something we like and we, we want to sw swap it out, we're welcome to do that and put it on another character, which is a really great addition and items now in combat you'll have like potions and stuff and you can actually use them once per combat so if you get like a poison that you throw onto an enemy and poison them you drag it here and then you can use that once per battle which is very helpful i, I actually really like the idea of having consumables that aren't one-time use in the whole game it's one time use per battle which makes them feel really fun and i really love just chucking a bunch of poison potions onto somebody on the first turn <laughs> All right, everybody, I think that's going to do it for our episode zero here. I, I hope I did a good job explaining everything. I hope this looks interesting to you guys. So, uh, so yeah, so thanks again for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope I will see you for episode one. See you then.